Should we disarm all the cops? No. Okay, okay. I'll actually give you a little bit more than that. Stick with me. I got you. Yeah. I, I, I will. I will defend my brothers. I will defend the weak. I will pursue and fight evil so others may sleep. I am the sheep dog, protecting the night. Wolf hunters unite. Bring it on. It's time to fight. Oh, sounds great, doesn't it? If we take away the guns from the police, then no one can die from getting shot by the police. Simple. Sounds glorious. We'll all go sit on the corner of a cliff and watch the sunset together. Uh, if we don't want any more products to get shoplifted, stolen, we just don't have stores because we wouldn't have to worry about that. And you know how many people would die in car accidents if we just got rid of cars? Hmm? But what if guns aren't the issue? What if it's people? And that's what we have to concern ourselves with and not just the tools that police officers use. This all stems from this week mayoral candidate in Minneapolis. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly, but Raymond Den, Dine. He's from the Democratic Farmer Labor Party. I don't, is that popular? He's calling for an overhaul of police policies basically that would disarm the police. That's how, that's how it's being touted, at least in the media. I couldn't find a direct quote where he said disarm the police in their entirety. Uh, my understanding is that what he wants to do is remove the sidearm from the police officers and essentially let them have weapons in their cars so that they could retreat to the car when they're in these stressful situations or under duress, they're, they're under threat. Obviously, that's super practical if you're in some apartment building and someone pulls a gun on you, like, hold on a second, <laughs> I gotta run to my car. When pushed for what the actual plan would be, he doesn't really have one. He talks about uh, wanting to demilitarize the police and, and be better at community policing, uh, whatever both of those things mean to him. And in all honesty, I'd love a chance to talk with this guy or sit down with him because I think that, I don't think he's speaking on this from a position of malice. I don't think he's wanting uh, police officers to get hurt. I don't think he's necessarily taking issues with policing in its in its entirety. I think he's just speaking out of a, out of a position of ignorance. He, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. He doesn't understand how policing works in modern society. The end game of what he's going for seems noble enough. It's just not practical because it's not real. What does he actually envision happening if police officers had no weapon when faced with the threat of a weapon? Would it look something like this? Drop the knife! You asked for it! I'm not coming out till I get what I want. Please, let us go. Help us. Shut up! Sending somebody in with exactly what you asked for, okay? You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. I'm out! Hold on, I got some in the bag. Show yourselves, pigs. Cover me. Got you. Oh. I only got this left. All right, let's get serious here for a second. I have two points that I want to bring up of contention against this notion that we should disarm the police. First, is that the vast majority of engagements with the police are completely and utterly unremarkable. Like with so many of these topics that I have been addressing in my YouTube videos, there's a lot more that could be said. And this is one of those things where we could, we could delve into the statistics, the objective information that's available to us when it comes to police use of force. That will have to happen as, as this channel develops, as I have opportunities to uh, have longer form uh, web show videos on my channel or podcasting. We'll get to some of these in more detail. But for right now, I just want to want... <sighs> You know what? I'm going to leave that error in there because it just is. I can't talk sometimes. It's terrible. Back to your regular scheduled mic cop video. There are approximately 900,000 sworn law enforcement officers in the United States. Approximately. It's not a dead-on number. 
There's probably more than that, but let's just go with 900,000. Let's assume that on any given day, an average of one third of them are working. That's, that's probably also low, but let's assume that 300,000 cops work in a given day. If each of those cops on average encounters a dozen people, and I would say from my experience, I encounter well over a dozen people every day. We're talking calls that you uh, are responding to from 911, non-emergency calls that you respond to, reports that you would take at the station, traffic stops that you would make. And that's just a normal patrol function. That's not any specialized teams involved in uh, narcotics activity, warrant searches, all kinds of things, so traffic units, the list goes on and on. There is probably way more than an average of 12 contacts that an average law enforcement officer makes in a day. But let's just lowball it at 12. We take that number, 300,000 times 12, and then we stretch that out. I think it's, uh, I got the numbers, 3.6 million contacts with law enforcement. 3.6 million contacts with law enforcement every single day. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop 600,000 of those off. We're just going to say 3 million. We're going to round way down because I'm going to assume 600,000 of the cops, of course, are not paying attention to what's going on around them because they're thinking about donuts. So they're, let's just throw that out. I'm, I'm going to give all of the numbers in favor of the cop haters. 3 million contacts a day. This is probably, again, super, super low. But 3 million contacts a day times 365 days a year, I got the number on my calculator of 1.095 E9, I guess 1.09 billion uh, contacts with law enforcement every year. Lowball. Billion. Now, according to the Washington Post, which is not necessarily police friendly uh, when it comes to reporting uh, police use of force, they said in 2016 there were 963 people fatally killed by the police. So if we run the math, okay, that means the fatal encounters with the police are a max percentage of 0.00088%. That's not even your chances of having a fatal encounter with the police. That's only your chances of having a fatal encounter with the police when you encounter the police. I mean, the numbers objectively are staggering. It just goes to prove that perception, the perception is what we're battling here. That's why I have this channel. That's why I do what I do with humanizing the badge, because it's the perception that is the issue, not the actual information. On an individual basis, if an officer uh, has conducted himself in a poor way or has done something wrong, illegal, unjustified, then he should be punished. And there, that happens. Michael Slager uh, in, in the Walter Scott shooting, he had pled guilty. He's going to be sentenced to jail, prison. So it happens. But the media perception is often that we have this wild problem with trigger happy cops. It's just not true. I looked on scientists calculate odd ways to die. You actually have a greater chance of dying from a shark attack, a greater chance of dying in a plane crash, a greater chance of being killed by lightning, a greater chance by being killed by the escape of radiation from a nearby nuclear power station. What the heck? Greater chance of dying in a terrorist attack, greater chance of dying by scalding hot water. What? Are you afraid of the bathroom now? Are you not going to take baths? Are we going to dewater the bathtubs? Oh, get this. You have a 1 in 250 million chance of dying from falling coconuts. <laughs> falling coconuts apparently kill about 150 people a year. Okay, so keep that in mind for your next vacation. It's risky, people. In other words, you have a 99.9999, maybe I, I might have missed a 9, 2% chance to be absolutely fine when you encounter the police. That's only the percentage of being fine when you encounter the police. It's way higher when you talk about the chances of both encountering the police in your day and having a fatal encounter with the police. My first contention is this is a non-issue. We don't need to disarm the police because the police having weapons and using them is a statistical non-event. Now let me be very, very clear. That does not mean that I'm advocating that we go around shooting people. It does not mean 
that I don't think that those people who have been shot by the police didn't have value intrinsically as people and that they weren't loved by someone and that we shouldn't be uh, upset that we live in a world where that has to happen sometimes. I'm not saying any of that stuff. That's not what I want. But that's just, that's the point. I mean, law enforcement officers are striving to work for the same world that everybody else wants, where there's peace and safety. That's what we want. Unfortunately, we don't live in a world in which that can happen without the ability and the preparedness of people to stand in when others are going to bring harm upon us or people we love or people in our community. We have to have people willing to stand in the gap and fight back. One last note on that, those numbers don't even account for what percentage of that was uh, for a reason, a justifiable reason versus non-justified and in, in which the officer was convicted of some issue. And I know there's gonna be people in the comments, well, that's the problem, the officers aren't being convicted. Listen, they go to the same court of law that you do. They, they, they are held to the same standard, if not a higher level of scrutiny in those cases where, where deadly force is used than anybody else. And so we're not gonna pretend that cops just are, are given carte blanche by prosecutors around the country to just go do whatever they want. The facts just don't sustain that. My second and final contention for this video today is that the police officers should be given the tools and the training necessary to meet the threats that they're facing. Think about uh, like 20 years ago, uh, or roughly, I think it was 98, I could be wrong, the North Hollywood shootout, uh, when the bank robbers had the full body armor on and they had AKs and they were firing at officers. I think, it, I don't remember how long it went on, it was like 40 minutes or something like that. There was like 2,000 2, rounds fired, eight people injured or something. Uh, it was insane. And officers before that time, it was not typical, if at all, carrying long guns, except for a shotgun maybe. So they learned, hey, if the bad guys who are robbing banks are upping their game with the types of weapons and, uh, and defensive armor that they're using to do it, we have to be prepared to meet that threat. We're, we're living in a day and age where, you know, San Bernardino can happen, where you can have a domestic terror attack and you have to be ready to meet that threat. We live in a time and a place where we don't have the luxury of having the military just hop in and, and fight our local battles for us. We have police officers in place. They're the ones stepping in and being the first responders to any threat that comes up in any form. We never know what it could be. And again, we look at the objective information, the chances of me and my career ever fighting a terrorist, they're super slim. But the fact is that uh, on the whole, not knowing when and where those threats may arise, officers should have the tools and the training available to them to meet that, to do their jobs. Having guns isn't the issue. Uh, think about this. Just because we have a gun on our side doesn't mean that we have to use it. Uh, in fact, we mostly don't. We got to get past this idea of allowing pop perceptions to drive our policies. We have to let objective, rational information uh, lead us to what type of conclusions will actually have an impact on how we police and, and how we educate our communities. Law enforcement has a long way to go from both a street cop level to administrative levels to um, city administration levels of giving officers a, a better chance at being in their communities in ways that help educate them, especially given the fact that this information uh, and these false perceptions are passed so fast and so easily through social media and now, and now the mainstream media. We have to be able to combat those perceptions. That's where the battle has to be fought. Anyway, enough of me. Thank you guys so much for always sticking with me, supporting what I'm doing. Please give this video a like, share it with someone, and I appreciate it. Turn on the notifications early squad. Can't wait to see what comment gets pinned this time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button for my channel. If you want to find me off of YouTube, you can always add me on Snapchat, follow me on Instagram or Twitter, like my Facebook page, and if you really like me, you can also check out my store or my Patreon page.